Okay, all right. Hello, everybody. This is Carl with Series Survival. What I'm going to be talking about is uh, what to expect if we're uh, invaded by a foreign army uh, or even domestic. Um, I'd like to kind of go back and, and cover my previous video on uh, out of sight, out of mind. I'd, I'd like to add a few things. When you're up here in the mountains and stuff, you know, uh, you want to refrain from chopping wood with your axe. I've been up here camping and stuff, and and I've been able to hear people chop wood from two, three miles away. It's going to give away your, your position. So you want to stay away from uh, chopping wood. You just want to use your bow saw, cut down some trees, you know, cut the branches off, whatever. Uh, cut yourself some good sized logs, what have you. And uh, just split the wood and stuff with a machete. Just take a rock and just kind of pound your machete down through there and stuff, you know. If it's in the winter, you're going to have to trim the sides and stuff to get to the dry wood. But uh, don't make a lot of noise. Uh, because that's going to give away your position. Okay, uh, as far as what to expect, I can't uh, cover every single scenario that, that you know you could encounter. It's just impossible. Um, uh, it's just common sense. Out of sight, out of mind. Don't give them a reason to come up looking for you. Um, you know, don't be bringing all your campers up here and stuff, your trailer houses and stuff like that, and, and uh, they can be detected from the air so easy. Uh, you know, they have, uh, the military has a special uh, program, satellite, satellite program, where it takes images and stuff of, of, of the earth, uh, of the geographic images of the mountains, you know, different parts of the mountains, different things and stuff. It records them. And if there's any other odd changes in that in 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 in, in those pictures, it studies them. And uh, that's the reason why when you do your shelters, you don't want your shelters perfectly square or rectangle because it picks out those things. It, it's programmed to pick out those shapes, and then it's going to detect it, and then it's going to it's going to mark it, and it's going to mark its coordinates, and they're going to come check you out. You know, and the thing about it is is. It's literally impossible to hide from thermal vision. You could go underneath, you could be in a, a, you know, a big old grove of pine trees, and you could be hiding in there, and that thermal vision is going to pick up your body shape just as like if those trees wasn't even there. You know? And then they got sights that can draw in on that target, and you're done. You know? So the thing about it is, don't even give them a reason to come up and look for you and stuff. You know, stay low key, stay quiet. Um, so they're gonna they're gonna secure all the big cities and the smaller towns and everything and stuff, all the residential areas and stuff first. Um, first, the military bases, then then cities and residential areas and stuff, because they know American, uh, you know, American people want having stuff like the Japanese. They thought it was ludicrous and stuff to invade us on our own country because behind every blade of grass is a, is a, is a firearm, you know. Well, all the other countries, they know that too as well. So, um, so the thing about it is, is uh, they, they, they're not dumb. They, they know there's preppers. They're, they know that there's people probably up in the hills hiding away and stuff like that. And, you know, they're already going to consider your arm regardless if you are or not. They're going to consider you armed, so they're going to shoot first and ask questions later. The thing about it is, is you know they usually they use uh, there's there's three common uh, formations and stuff that troops march in. It's staggering line, which is usually like along paths and roads, which is a long line, but it's staggering. You got your point person up first, and then usually anywhere from 50 to 100 feet back, then it starts staggering. It starts crossing every you know, they start positioning men on each side of the road like every 50 feet. And then you have uh, a wedge, and then you have a chevron. If you, uh, if, if, if you s spot an enemy uh, coming up the draw or, uh, you know, a path that you're on, which you shouldn't be on, you should be off in the boondocks into some trees and stuff where it's, you know, but uh, or a road if you're out hunting or whatever. If you happen to encounter an enemy soldier, an en enemy trooper, then uh, you know nine times out of ten he's not going to be alone. Nine times out of ten he's going to have a unit with him. You know he's point. So he's 
you're going to be expecting a lot of company, you know. And so they're going to come up and they're going to do a look-see up here in the, uh, in the mountains where you're at. So the best thing to do is uh, just ditch your stuff. Always had your gear prepared to where you can just pack up and go. Have your, you know, don't, uh, you know, if, if you have to leave your, your tarps, leave it, you know. Um, if, if there's something in the bottom of your pack that you need to get out, get it out and then put everything back in there to where all you have to do is just stuff that back in, you know, load up and go, you know, put it on your back and go. Don't have all your stuff out of your pack strung all over the place and what have you stuff where you got to go through and pick up everything because you may have to, to, to abandon your camp ASAP and relocate, okay? So have all your tarps and what have you stuff, build a good shelter and what have you stuff, you know, uh, to where you can just easily undo it, gaffle everything up and stuff, and then take on up, you know? So, um, but uh, the best thing to do is to avoid any type of, like, uh, you know, confrontation with, with any type of, like, military being foreign or domestic head on, you know. Um, if you're, if, if you have a group and you're really well trained, you know, and you, you know, you have that, that knowledge and, and that, that experience behind you and stuff, and if you think you can do it, I mean, great, but, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with just running and hiding, you know, until, you know, the opportunity comes around to stuff that you can do something better, so to speak. But the thing about it is, just avoid it, you know. And another thing too as well, is uh, <clears throat> don't be target practicing, you know. Hopefully you have all that stuff already prepped and done, your scope's already sighted in, you're already familiar with your firearms, whatever you're using, or your bows, or whatever, you know. Um, hopefully you're already experienced with that stuff, you don't have to go up in the mountains and stuff when it's a critical time that you should be being quiet and, and, and out of sight and out of mind and start doing target practice and stuff. Hey, look at me. Here I am. Come and kill my ass, you know. So, I mean, you know, hopefully you're a lot more pre prepared and stuff for that. Um, and uh, uh, in the summer and stuff, you know, the, the, the animals start moving back up to the higher country and stuff and some of them stay low. I mean, Food's pretty much abundant if you know how to hunt and set snares and different things and stuff, you know, and, and food's a lot more abundant. You got wild edible herbs, you know, berries, fruits and stuff like that, wild strawberries. I mean, here in the Rocky Mountains and stuff, you know, I mean, it's just loaded full of, of wild edible herbs and stuff. I mean, a person could come up here and just live really, really well and survive really, really well off the, off the land and stuff. So, but anyway, uh... If you do end up having to engage the enemy, there's no way they, they catch you off guard because if you're a single person, you just can't be out looking around all the time. You got stuff you got to do. You got to hunt. When you're hunting, you know, keep an eye out for, for patrol units and stuff like that. You're going to come across from other pet preppers, you know. You know, relax. Don't get all nervous and, and freaked out and stuff. They're preppers just like you. Just don't go around and start shooting everybody thinking that they're a threat. You know, I mean, they're living human beings. You know, just like yourself. They're just out trying to survive. Now, if, if, they're, if they're enemy military, you know, yeah, you got a problem. You know, the best thing you do is, like I said, get your ass back up to your camp, pack up your shit, get the hell out. Now, here's the big problem. If they got dogs, if they have dogs, you're fucked. You're screwed. If they got dogs and they're coming up, they're going to track you down. That's what those dogs are for. And so if those dogs are two, three, four, five hundred 500 yards away, you need to take those dogs out before they get right up on you. The more distance and stuff you have between them, you and them, it gives you the more time to get your gear, get the hell out, and relocate to a safer area. You know, um, if they have dogs, you got to take those dogs out. Don't worry about the soldiers. Take those dogs out, you know. 
because uh, you can run and hide from soldiers. You need to take those dogs out. So, but anyway, um, thanks for watching. I uh, hope this helped you a little bit. Like I said, I, you know, there's no way I could cover everything. You know, just use common sense. And the best thing to do is just stay out of sight and out of mind. If you, if you can run and hide and ditch your stuff and, and let an enemy patrol pass you without having a, a, a confrontation, a firefight, you're going to live longer. You know, but if they have dogs, they're going to find you. You've got to get the hell out. That's the most serious, dangerous thing right there if they have dogs. Stay out of sight. Um, find a nice uh, wash or something that you can hide in. If you hear a plane come over and stuff, they're probably trying to sur surveillance uh, the area and stuff. And they more likely they have thermal vision, especially at nighttime. Duck and hide, man. Have yourself some uh, space blankets. You know, they, you know, they, they, they're supposed to help you. Uh, you know, they're supposed to uh, protect you from thermal vision. You know, um, I don't know how true that is, but it's better than nothing. But if you can find a, a, a deep alcove or a, a deep draw that you can, you know, that's a, a wash that uh, is washed out and real deep and everything and stuff, you know, uh, that uh, the, the winter runoff, you know, floods out and stuff. And if you can get in there and get up under like a little alcove or something like that, that's what you need to do. That's going to hide your body heat because uh, thermal vision is a direct threat and uh, you can count on that uh, any you know every country pretty much has the you know as far as you know surveillance systems and stuff like that they pretty much have everything we have thermal vision night vision you know so anyway thanks for watching this segment and I'm not sure if I'm going to be doing any more videos but if so then I hope you join me thank you